Welcome to Radio Unfriendly. I'm your host, Steve, and this is another edition of Pure Rank, the podcast where I pick a band or artist and rank my favorite albums of theirs. On this episode, I will be talking about the Southern California skate punk band Lagwagon. As always, first, I'd like to dive into the history of the band <clears throat> Lagwagon. Lagwagon was formed in 1990 in Galita, California. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Originally, they were called Section 8. They changed their name because there were some other bands in the area with that name. Uh, Lagwagon was the name of an early song of theirs that they named after their touring van. Uh, so they became Lagwagon. <clears throat> their debut album, Duh, was released in 1992 on Fat Records. This band has actually spent their entire career on Fat Records, although they have had several offers to uh, join various major labels. The band has been together, for the most part, since 1990, uh, they went on hiatus in 2000 and then started up again two years later. As of this recording, the band has released nine studio albums, four EPs, a box set, which was the 2011 Putting Music in Its Place, which included remastered versions of Duh, Trashed, Haas, Double Platinum, and let's talk about feelings. And all of these remastered versions included bonus material. Uh, there also was a live DVD included in this box set. They've also uh, released a compilation of B-sides and previously unreleased material. They've released a live album, which was 2005's Live in a Dive. They've also appeared on numerous compilation albums, most notably uh, quite a few of the fat record comps, such as like Fat Music for Fat People, Life in the Fat Lane, uh, among many others. Uh, throughout the band's career, they have gone through several lineups. Um, their original lineup was Joey Cape on vocals, Chris Flippin on guitar, Sean Dewey on guitar, Jesse Buglione, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, on bass, and Derek Plord on drums. In 1996, Sean Dewey left the band and was replaced by Ken Stringfellow. And in 1997, Derek Plord was released, uh, um, sorry, replaced on drums uh, by Dave Ron. Also in 1997, Ken Stringfellow left and was replaced by Chris Rest. And then in 2010, Jesse Buglione left and was replaced by Joe Raposo. Um, I'm going to deviate just a little bit and talk about some of Joey Cape's projects outside of Lagwagon. Um, he has done a bunch of solo stuff. He's released six solo albums and a bunch of splits with artists such as Tony Sly of No Use for a Name and John Snodgrass of Drag the River. <clears throat> just... Let me back up a little bit. There is a reason I'm talking about Joey's projects outside of Lagwagon. I'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, but his first solo album was called Bridge. It was released in 2008. And his most recent was <clears throat> A Good Year to Forget uh, in 2021. I do want to play some clips uh, from some of his solo stuff. Uh, this first clip is an acoustic version of Violins 
uh, which was a song uh, from Lagwagon that was originally released on the 1995 album Hoss. I am just another fool and I have to keep telling myself that I am just a hypocrite and I have to keep calling you one Cause I forgot to bite my tongue And my assumption It is the mother of all mistakes um, Another one that I would like to play just a clip of is the acoustic version of the song Alien 8. Um, that was originally a well, another Lagwagon song that was on the 1997 album Double Platinum. Um, and this one, uh, this acoustic version came from the Liverbird split, uh, which he did with John Snodgrass. And actually, I don't think I mentioned it, but the that violins acoustic version was uh the acoustic version was released on the uh a split he did with tony sly in 2004 which was just called acoustic but here's the clip of uh acoustic version of alienate But you will rise again, and it. No one can appreciate the poor misunderstood. Can you see that I don't care anymore? So. Uh, so he had his acoustic uh, run, <clears throat> or his solo run, rather. He did a bunch of acoustic stuff, but uh, yeah. Uh, he also had another band that he formed in 2000 called Bad Astronaut. Uh, that band has released three LPs and a split with Armchair Martian. And I'd like to play a little clip from a song of theirs. Uh, from their 2001 debut album, Acrophobe. Uh, this is a clip from the song Needle in the Hay. Needle in the Hay from Bad Astronaut. Uh, so, as far as Joey's side projects, this is last, but certainly not least. Uh, Joey is one of the members of one of my other uh, favorite bands, the punk rock supergroup Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. That band formed in 1995 in San Francisco. Uh, Joey is one of the guitar players for the band and also provides backing vocals. He has played on all of their albums. Uh, as of this recording, they've released six studio albums, two quote-unquote live albums, uh, three EPs, and two compilation albums. Uh, so, <clears throat> back to Lagwagon. Uh, now, I'd like to get into a little bit of my own personal history regarding this band. Um, so I first heard about this band around 1995. 
I was in the Air Force living in New Mexico. Uh, my roommate and I were both into punk music. And so one day we were just kind of going through each other's CD collections. And one of the albums I saw he had uh, was a copy of the Lagwagon album Haas. And uh, the cover stood out to me. Uh, it had the guy from, uh, shoot, I want to say Rawhide. Uh, give me just a second here. What? I want to. I want to make sure I'm not giving you the wrong information. I, I want to say rawhide. It could have been. God. What? No, bonanza, bonanza. Uh, so it was. It's the uh, the Hoss character thur, from from the show Bonanza. I never watched that show, so I don't really know who these people. But I just I I thought it was a, a funny cover for a punk band at the time. And uh, anyway, cover stood out to me. Uh, I'd not heard of the band at that point, and my roommate was a little bit surprised uh, that I had not heard of them because we had earlier been talking about the band No Use for a Name uh, and some other bands along those same lines. So he was just like, you know them, but you don't know them. So this is weird. So he played me some of that Haas album, and uh, at the time I thought it was okay, but nothing about it really grabbed me. Um, it just... Uh, it was good. You yeah, know, nothing special, really. Um, but, yeah, so as far as Lagwagon goes, I actually got into this band very, very late in life. Like, we're talking within the last five years is when I finally got into them. And uh, so I want to tell you about this, this concept if you want to use the word concept, uh, that I call that one song. So there's always like these bands that you listen to and they're like, yeah, they're all right, but nothing about them really appeals to you or, or grabs you or doesn't really connect you to them. Uh, and, and this happens to me a lot, but there's always like this one song that will pop up that you'll hear that basically just gets you into the band. I don't know if you folks listening have the same problem. <laughs> I don't know if you call it a problem, but this whole, this whole thing, um, like just, just take a few, uh, like one example is, um, I was never really a big fan of dropkick Murphy's. Like I was like, okay, they're fine. Whatever. Um, until I heard the song Walk Away from their 2003 album uh, Blackout. I heard the song Walk Away, and uh, for some reason, it just it just appealed to me. And from then on, I uh, became a fan. There's, there's a lot of other bands of this nature where I, just, I, I like them, they're okay. But I never really got into them until I heard that one song. Um, and so Lagwagon was one of these. Um, was one of those. You know, so I, I, like I said, I liked them. They were good. They're really like, you know, this is good stuff. But not really a band that like spoke to me, I guess you could say. Put it that way. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I heard this one song from them, and uh, this one got me into the band. Um, so I'm going to play that song. Uh, this is the song Cog in the Machine uh, from their 2014 album Hang.
All right. So that was Cog in the Machine from the album Hang. Um, I also want to mention something else about Lagwagon. Um, I am... Mm, a very strange fan of Lagwagon. Like, <clears throat> the stuff that I like of theirs is not typical of your quote-unquote typical Lagwagon fan, I guess. Um, so I'm going to warn you ahead of time, when you when we get to my top five albums, uh, they are not going to be the typical favorite albums uh, that you might hear from somebody else. Like I did a poll uh, on social media of what uh, other people's favorite albums are. Uh, so mine are completely different, just to let you know. Um, Lagwagon is an interesting creature in regards to being one of my favorite bands. Uh, for one, out of my quote-unquote main list of favorite bands, uh, yeah, I have I have a main list, basically a list of bands that are always in, I guess, top rotation of favorite bands. Uh, so anyway, out of my main list of favorite bands, Lagwagon is the band that I've been into the shortest amount of time. Like I said, when I heard the song Cog in the Machine, um, that's what got me into them. Uh, that album had already been out like a couple of years. Uh, but like once I heard the album, I was pretty much hooked and, um, it got me into Joey's other stuff. Um, let me, let me rephrase. Um, I had already been into me first in Gimme Guineas, but I actually didn't really know that Joey Cape was in it. Um, probably because he wasn't a singer, but, um, but yeah, after listening to, uh, that song and getting into Lagwagon, I started getting into Bad Astronaut, uh, and then I started getting into his solo stuff. So that was kind of why I touched on that stuff as well. Uh, but yeah, with this band, I really have not been listening to them near as long as I've been listening to bands like Bad Religion and the Descendants. Um, so they're kind of like the newer band on my list of favorites. Another thing that sets them apart uh, from most of my favorite bands, it, it, I kind of feel weird admitting this, um, but I don't actually own any physical albums of theirs. Everything I own of their material, I bought from either Bandcamp or iTunes. Um, so, yeah. Now, granted, this is something I plan to rectify. Um, their stuff is still available on vinyl through Fat Records. Um, most of it through reissues. Um, so, at some point, I'm going to buy their stuff on vinyl. Uh, just because I want it. But I do own their stuff. I, just, I bought it. I just it, I bought it on digital. Um, another thing about Lagwagon, which is, um, going to be very odd, uh, because it, it kind of made it very interesting to put this episode of, uh, Pure Rank together, um, is like when I started putting this together, I'm, I'm actually not super familiar with like their album catalog. Um, like I own most of them, of course. Uh, but when I'm listening to them, I'm usually not listening to a specific album. Um, I usually just like find a good lag wagon shuffle playlist and go to town and just listen to. So I know a lot of their songs. And yeah, I, I've got a lot of songs that are favorites and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, I'm really not super familiar with the albums themselves. Well, I didn't used to be. Uh, I'm a lot more familiar with the catalog now that I've had to put this thing together. Um, but, but yeah, so like, I like Lagwagon. They're a favorite, but um, I am not a fan in the way I think most people are. Just, just based on my 
uh, like what my favorite albums are and what my favorite songs are. And so it's just, it's just kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I like Lagwagon. I'm a big fan, but most people would agree with my, my choices of favorites. So that being said, uh, without further jibber jabber about the band themselves, uh, here are my top five favorite Lagwagon albums. Dun, dun, dun. Number five, Double Platinum. Um, Double Platinum was released in August 1997 via Fat Records. Uh, like I said earlier, everything they've done it was released on Fat Records. Um, but yeah, so this was released then. Um, it was recorded in 1996 and 1997 at Orange Whip Recording in Santa Barbara. The Music Annex in Menlo Park, California. Uh, and Dave Wellhausen Recording in San Francisco. So it was recorded at multiple locations. It was produced by Joey Cape, Angus Cook, Ryan Green, and Ken Stringfellow. This was the first album without their original lineup. Um, as I mentioned lineups earlier, Ken Stringfellow had joined on guitar to replace the original guitarist, Sean Dewar, and Dave Ron replaced uh, Derek Plord on drums on this one. Uh, some of the standout tracks on here uh, to me are like Alien 8, Making Friends, Today, Bad Scene, uh, to all my friends. Um, so, uh, speaking of making friends, um, I'm going to play you that song. So here's Making Friends from Double Platinum. Uh, making friends from 1997's Double Platinum. Which brings us to number four. Uh, my number four favorite album is Railer. Uh, this was released in October 2019 uh, via Fat Records. Uh, it is their ninth studio album, 
and actually their most recent studio album. Um, it was recorded at Maple Sound Studios in Santa Ana, California, and produced by Cameron Webb. Uh, this album has actually made it to number 12 on the Billboard Independent Albums chart. Uh, includes a cover version of the Journey song, Faithfully. Here's a clip from that. So, um, yeah, so good, good version of that song. Uh, some of the standout tracks on this album include Surviving California, Stilling Light, Genie, Parable, Bubble, The Suffering, uh, and that song Faithfully. That was, that's a pretty good song, I think. Um, so yeah, trying to pick which song I was going to, uh, play as an example on here. Um, I had some trouble with that. Uh, originally I was going to do surviving California because it has, uh, a really good display of how good their guitar players are. And it just, it was just really good. Go check out that song. Sorry, in California, if you haven't already. Uh, but the song that I actually picked to play is called The Suffering. So here's that one. Oh, yeah. 
Right, that was the suffering from Railer, uh, which brings us to album number three. My third favorite Lagwagon album is Blaze. This album was their sixth studio album. It was released in April two thousand three. Uh, recorded in November. 2002 at Motor Studios in San Francisco. It was produced by Joey Cape. This was um, the first album that they released after their short two-year hiatus um, and was actually the first Lagwagon album to rank on the Billboard 200. Uh, it got up to 172. Uh, this one's got uh, a funny um, album cover. It's got a guy and his his lady, I'm assuming, uh, like just hanging out with a horse. So, yeah, cool one. Um, a lot of good songs on this one, of course. Uh, some of the standouts on it to me were Burn, E Dagger, Falling Apart, Dividers, Lullaby, Baggage. Um, for this one, I am going to play the song E Dagger. So here's that one. Honey, try to go easy. We can do anything. Come on, E. We got it covered. We can stop anytime, anytime, anytime. Come on, E. It's just a party. Let's go to party town. Then we can party down. Come on, E. Check out my funny hat. My name is Randall. I wrote you this song.
Johnny. All right, so that was a dagger from Blaze. We are now up to number two in my ranking. My number two favorite album is Let's Talk About Feelings. This was their fifth full-length album. It was released in November 1998 and recorded that same year at Motor Studios in San Francisco. It was produced by Joey Cape and Ryan Green. Um, also, interestingly enough, uh, well, I find it interesting. I don't know if you go. Uh, the album was mixed by Bill Stevenson and Stephen uh, Stephen Egerton at the Blasting Room in Fort Collins. Uh, very fun cover. Uh, it has this painting of this teenage kind of nerdy girl. Uh, and uh, it was painted by Mark DeSalvo. Joey Cape has said that this is his favorite Lagwagon album. Uh, I don't know when he said it, but I, I came across something that said he said this was his favorite. So I don't know if any of his newer ones or any of their newer ones are favorites. But at one point in time, he said this was his favorite one. Um, it debuted on the Billboard Heat Seekers chart at number 33. And in 2017, Rolling Stone magazine named it the 42nd greatest pop punk album ever. Um, in 2011, this album was reissued with a bunch of demos, outtakes, EPs, uh, B-sides. Um, it also included a couple of covers. Uh, they did a cover of Echo and the Bunny Man song, Bring on the Dancing Horses. Uh, it also included a cover of the Jawbreaker song, Want. Uh, I'm actually going to play a clip of that song. Here we go. Shut Yeah, that was a cover of Jawbreakers Want. Um, the album also included a cover of the Agent Orn song, Everything Turns Gray. I'm not going to play a clip of that. Uh, standout tracks on this album, in my opinion, uh, included Gun in Your Hand, Leave the Light On, Train, Love Story, uh, Owen Meany, which actually I played at the very top of the episode. That was that little intru instrumental uh, bit that I played at the beginning of the show. Um, and then the last standout track on this one is the song that I am going to play for you. Uh, this is May 16th.
May 16th. Um, That's an interesting song. Joey has said that he wrote it in like 10 minutes. Um, and it is basically about a falling out that he had with a friend. Um, but it's a fairly popular song as far as the band goes, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, probably one of my favorite songs of theirs. And that brings us to song, I'm sorry, album number one. My favorite album from Lagwagon. Um, It is not what you think it's going to be. So if you came and you're listening to this thinking that uh, Haas is my number one favorite Lagwagon album, uh, you are going to be disappointed. Uh, <laughs> my favorite lag wagon album is Hang. Uh, Hang was released in October 2014, uh, of course, by Fat Records. It was recorded in 2014 at the Blasting Room in Fort Collins uh, and also at Orange Whip Recording in Santa Barbara, California. It was produced by Joey Cape, Bill Stevenson, Angus Cook, and Thorn Flowers. Um, so this is uh, got a very simple cover on this one. It's just a cover of a noose uh, with a bunch of bee. I think those are bees. Uh, this might be hornets. I don't know. Um, this was uh, the first album to feature their current bass player, Joe Raposa, who, as I mentioned, replaced uh, the original bass player, uh, Jesse Buglione. Um, Partially my favorite, maybe, because this was the album of theirs that basically made me a fan of Lagwagon, and it's the one that really got me into them. Uh, But also, I just really like all of the songs on here. It's it's just good. Um, it includes two bonus tracks, uh, which are both covers. Uh, they did a cover of Peter, Paul, and Mary's Don't Laugh at Me, and they did a cover of No Use for a Name's uh, Exit. Um, I'm not going to play any clips of these covers, um, but some of the standout tracks... Um, Man, there's a lot. I really like this album, I'm telling you. Uh, of course, Cog in the Machine is, is, is on this album. That was the one that I played when I was talking about how I got into this band. Uh, Burden of Proof, Rain, uh, Poison in the Well, Obsolete, Absolute, Western Settlements. Uh, Drag is another good one. That was actually originally released 
uh, as an acoustic version on uh, Joey's 2011 solo album, Doesn't Play Well With Others. Uh, but yeah, tons of great songs on this one. It's awesome. Um, having already played Cog in the Machine, I wasn't really sure which one of these songs I'm going to play for uh, showing a song that comes off this album. Um, but I ended up, ultimately, I went with uh, Poison in the Well. So uh, here's Poison in the Well. brings us to the end of this edition of pure rank by radio and friendly um so there i have it i hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as i enjoyed making it um not sure what the next one will be uh but i hope you come back and listen to that one a couple of the podcasts that i think you should listen to include one band five songs by dave brown that's the uh podcast where he just you know talks about a band um from the perspective of five of the classic songs uh punk lotto pod is another great punk rock podcast where justin and dylan talk about uh different albums from different years and uh, if you are a Star Wars geek, uh, please consider listening to my other podcast, Rebel Rock Radio, where we talk about Star Wars nerd stuff. Uh, and I also play music from newer underground bands on that one as well. Uh, but this has been the Lag Wagon episode of Pure Rank. Uh, so thanks for listening. Uh, if you're listening on Apple, please leave a review, if you would, please. Um, and that's it for me. Have a great day. Enjoy. <laughs>